Hello and welcome to the updated and improved AFK Ultimate Guide. Now, I great start, great start. Now I'm gonna go straight into it. Now, after the intro, you should see what it can do. But I'm gonna talk to you about the build while in the Ultimate. So I found this already here. So let's begin with the build. The premise of the build is to be AFK. Now we don't need to touch anything in this build. We can just AFK it. The reason why this is working is because we have lots of black in on hit, which is considered instant. Now, there's a ring here I have that has a prefix like in the hit with spells. Now, I can keep using this ring or the Watcher's Eye. It's or. You can use either or or both, right? So, the Watcher's Eye I'm mentioning is right here. Uh, lucky to hit with, by, with vitality. I should mute the game as well because it's really loud right now. Now, <clears throat> we are using Castman Stunned. Castman Stunned is enabled by having all our skills linked to Castman Stunned using Skyfall or Valyrium, which I'll talk about later, and most importantly, Elder's Battery or a source to, to remove energy shield. The reason why this is important is because this lead. Apparently, you actually can avoid stuns now with energy shield, even though you are using Skyforth or whatever the hell it there is. So previously, in previous leagues, that was not the case. So at least lastly, it wasn't the case, but now it is the case. So it's very important you either take Eldritch Battery or you take um MP Diagnostic. Now I just realized I didn't take my amulet. I just took some random stuff. Like I took all my gear off, put some random trash on, and here we go. Right. Skills revolve around desecrate and detonate dead. The so desecrate and detonate dead are a core combo of this, and we're using that as a corpse explosion and converting the fire damage into chaos damage. Now this chaos damage is going to let us poison the enemies. So when we poison the enemies, they take a degen over time. And because we can use more than one, again, like last time, we need to have a flask because the petrified damage is very strong. Now, the reason why we need to have... Uh, is this good? Maybe, I don't know. It's because... Uh, I lost my trap. Oh yeah, poison. It's because we to, poison is really good for over time, damage over time. Now, this is done by using the consuming dark which also has poison enemies now unfortunately in my last video i accidentally showed you this node here when i didn't need it so you should refund this if you have both daggers okay so both daggers you do not need it because your case damage is already guaranteed to poison now if you are going to do a different setup say with that this uh pongings which doesn't have the poison now our poison chance for this detonate dead is under our full full amount of poison, then you can take it. But of course I have a, I have tattoos here for poison and here so it's all good. And normally in my normal setup I don't need it. So as you saw I don't need that stuff to work. Now if I take a look at my uh, notepad here, we should go over the atomization. So I've gone over a dagger and the ring. Now the ring can be crafted quite easily. I have a video on it already and I would recommend you to watch this. This ring can be crafted really cheap. Well not this ring exactly, but um, a similar ring can be crafted much cheaper. And now next part is amulet. In the first video I said to use, in fact I don't think I said it explicitly, I said that um, I could run the ultimatums even without the fines um, because and I put on a trash amulet. And the trash amulet I chose to put on was uh, that unique? What's the unique chord again? <laughs> I put the unique. What's the unique chord? The the elder the elder one in presence in presence. It's garbage. It's garbage. Okay, you don't have to use it. You can use it if you want. If you want more damage, but honestly, life resist to fix your to fix your gear is perfect. Okay. Now the next thing is Skyforth or Valyrium. Now in many of my videos, I had Mage Mode on with um, black regen per second, and you go wait, but you can't regen the Skyforth, and that's correct. That's because sometimes in some inscribed ultimatums, 
at some of these inscribed item items, they would have lots of degen on it, and all we need to do is survive. So damage is irrelevant. In that case, I can put in, put on a Valerium and then have everything have my region re-enabled and use a flask like this, which is really, which is really strong. So Skyfall with Valerium, up to you. There's no big, no big, no big difference. But the most important part is that your ES is either zero or not protecting your HP. Okay, this will actually, in, by having protect your HP, will enable monsters to avoid stuns. I'll play a kit for you right now. So, currently, the interaction with Skyforth and Endia Shield has not been fully solved. Um, previously understood is that when you are stunned with Energy Shield, it, the natural 50% of evasion of energy of stun, so the avoidance of stun is 50% with Energy Shield, that does not interact with Blood Notch. So, even if you have Energy Shield, you will still get your Blood Notch procs every single time. However, however, this thing, because we are using Skyforce to enable cast on stuns, this is no longer the case for cast on stuns. When you have energy shield on your life bar, when it protects your life bar, it will actually prevent cast on stun half time. So we were actually at half power with energy shield. Now, as you can see, we have tested and checked it. So you will have to use Eldritch Battery or um, Agnostic to move Energy Shield off your life pool. So as long as ES is not protecting your life pool, you will have double damage. In addition, we do need um, Unwavering Stance because, wait no no no, um, not, uh, well, the, the keys at the bottom, <laughs> wait no evasion right? So mobs with low accuracy will actually miss you, um, surprisingly. Uh, so I tested it and I've confirmed it, that is nece necessary. And continue. Now, regards to gearing, I would say that the first major upgrade you want is the fights. Fights is the most important because this truly allows you to AFK. Because you know with certainty that unless it's degen, or one shot, you're not going to die. Now, this can be quite expensive, but I think the price is dropping. So it's around 40, 35 div right now. And afterwards, you can choose a Mage Blood. Now, if you already have enough for Mage Blood, go for it, because this is good for every build. There's no build where it's not good. And moving on to the spell slot. Now, a lot of people have been asking if it's good to use the new unique belt that gives flasks. What's it called again? I'll cut this out. <clears throat> um, what's a new, what's a new, new unique belt, belt called? A turns of tides, times of turn, turn turns of tides. Sorry. Tides of time, <laughs> tides of time, unique belt. Okay. <clears throat> See, and we continue. Um, we'll continue it right now so this is the belt i'm talking about a lot of people have recommended this belt as a suggestion and while it is kind of good for our purposes it is not great at all reason is um the mods from ultimatum usually um are ex explicit no flasks or the monsters will absorb charges siphon charges from you so we, didn't, we want as much stability as we can. We do not to want to rely on flasks. Flasks are, say, an, like, a, like a temporary buff. They should be, right? Now, this doesn't have any life on it, or resists, or bang or int or whatever. So I would not recommend this because if you just use a real belt, so unhide this. Um, you get so much life from it, resist chaos, blah, 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 blah. Now, by having more life, this increases your max hit to a much higher level. And in this scenario, you're safer to one-shots. 
which is the number one issue that I've been asked about. Um, moving on, so Wither is a source that you can obtain from this notable here, Overwhelming Malice. Now, I, I know I have this cluster here that I sniped one div, but it gives Unholy Might. So what is Unholy Might? In 3.24, they've changed Unholy Might to give Fizz Converted to Chaos for us, useless, and 25 chance to apply Wither on hit. Now, Wither on hit is extremely powerful because we have Chain DD, rocking with all the spells and everything. There are so many spells and hits. You will be able to get 15 stacks of Wither on the enemy. Now, what does Wither do? Wither makes it so that, so that the enemy who is Withered takes 6% increased damage per Wither stack. 15 stacks, 90%. 90% Wither. 90% chaos damage is almost double damage. So you really want a source of wither, eventually. Now, what I was using for the longest time, if I can still find it, is a cost like this. I believe I paid like 60C. Now, what you should be doing is copy pasting a cost up into path of wave building and checking the position. So you want the position of this to be in the first two. See how this is right here, that's because this cluster is 3 passive with Unwavering Evil. And this is considered to be in the back row. And you want this in the front and 2 gem slots. That is the optimal solution. Uh, why did I say that? <laughs> why did I say that? Okay. And now, the next part is um, gearing that I just went over. So, Original Sin is, is only really good for bossing because you can drop despair for uh, enfeeble and you can use other sources of conversion for um, extra damage so you can drop your weapons for oscillating scepter or kong mings for for the dark seer which i i was using dark seer here i wanted to use this but unfortunately it is bugged because i think the the blind the interaction between blind and trickster this lags the game out to crazy. It's so laggy. Something wrong with it. So I would recommend this, but unfortunately I cannot. Now, the next most important question that I always get is a single target. So how do you do single target? I get stuck in trauma also, it's so slow. So my solution to this is these two gems. Now we can take out Cast and Stun, put in Ellie Focus, we can take out Chris Area Effect, which I normally have, but you might not, might not for efficacy. Now, this is going to be a manual cast, definite death. Now, the solution for Desecrate is to use Faster Casting and Arcanist Brand. And for a quick demonstration, I'll go into the map. What you're supposed to do is, uh, well, say, who, say the boss is here, um, put some Arcanist Brands, make sure you keep them up, and then you start, start casting DD. Right, start casting DD. And that's a single target. You can use cremation, but I find that DD is still much better. Like double damage. So here's a boss. Arcus on it, and then cast DD. Then I put it on. It's on now. Yeah. So cast DD. And that's it. Oh, it's not phasing anymore. I didn't realize. I thought it was phasing. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, moving on. So mistakes. Um, number one, in ultimatum. You do require overcap resistances. Your resistances have to be at a hundred or more. The reason is because um, <clears throat> the monsters in Ultimatum have elemental exposure, so they will apply. We can just, we can see the passive tree. Um, they will expose you for minus twenty five, but this is minus twenty five to your uncapped. So if you have a hundred, you go down to seventy five. If you have 75, you go down to 50. 50% 50 resistances. So, it is extremely important to have 100 or more. Now, the next thing is, as I mentioned earlier, and, and this and showed, we do need iron reflexes, and we do need old treachery. It, 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 this will double your damage, and because some mobs have no accuracy, you have to use iron re reflexes. Um, so the next issue that is most commonly addressed is hold and critical. I wonder if I can find one. 
Okay, so now this ultimatum is an example of what you cannot run. So you should never click prismatic and then click um, uh, Razor Dance. Reason is because, well, when you get crit by cold, but notch does not work. So as an example, what do I need? My makings? Do I even have any? Hopefully I do. I do. Sacrifice. So to show you what I mean, this does not work because crits and cold damage do not actually stun you. They will freeze you instead. Now uh, this I'll show you can show you this here. Plus the ultimate item. And you see, I do not, I do not heal because of Blood Notch. And death is one of the reasons why you will die in Ultimatum. Now, the next biggest issue is fire damage. Now, I would recommend against Raging Fire 4. I think I have it. Joy, right? Raging Fire 4, Raging Dead 4. So, for example, Raging Dead 4 has a lot of fire pen. And if you don't have Divine Flesh or enough gear or or something like that, then you get one shot. Or a lot of life, you get one shot. So I would avoid that as well. The next one would be Razor Dance 4. Over here as well. The Razor Dance 4, 1, 2, 3 is okay. It applies Craft of Blood. Now, Razor Dance 4 will leave Biz Legion on the floor. And that can be very dangerous. Because sometimes your life is just going down and down and down and down. You're like, what's going on? This Legion, what Legion? I did the gen, it's Razor Dance 4. Now, uh, this guy here is, well, everyone seems to recognize him when I point him out. This guy, uh, he has a special ability. Um, he will, when he attacks you, if you are considered hindered, I believe he will crit you with cold or something. Something along the lines of what I just showed you. So. When he attacks you, you do not heal with Blood Notch. And it's very dangerous. And people people do die, people will die to this guy without the Fires of Destiny. So I would I would say the reason why oh, sorry. The fix to this is to use Hinder. Now if I show you my passive tree, I have chosen to use Hinder on this jewel together with Craft of Blood. Because it was really cheap and I sniped it. Okay, I I sniped it. Now where would you where should you get Hinder? You should get a hinder on your abyssal socket, on your on your belt. So life and hinder. You can get it on a hinder jewel with um. I took it out because I was moving around, but you can get a hinder on your nature's patience. I think. Um, you can get a hinder on a cluster jewel. I'm pretty sure. You can also get it on a timeless jewel, but the easiest face by far is either another jewel. Or a, a, an abyssal jewel in your belt. Um, next thing on the list is um, Pantheon. Okay, now Pantheon is extremely important that you do not take Grand King. If you read the first line right there, if you get stunned, you can't get stunned again for two seconds. That will break the build completely. Now, the ideal Pantheon is actually Lunaris. With number one and three taken only. Only. Now, if you have already taken two and four, you can undo it by putting the vessel in to the same map and running that map. And you will deselect that um that option. Um of course Shakari is very good. Basically it caps up the poisons on you, and because you have divide flash, you can apply the reduced damage taken to early damage too. It's really good. This is really, really good. Um Next on the list is single target of dress specters. Now, this league Wraithlord has come down in price a lot, so you can buy Wraithlord and then get an eleventh uh, specter setup. Now, and you will use as a result when you use this crate, you will raise all these enemies which are part of the corpse pool with three sixty life. Now you can also include meat sack, but I didn't include it because I'm too lazy. And yeah, that's it. Um, next up is uh, blood notch. Now people ask, 
to you get 60 blood notch? The true answer is yes, but the real answer is a bit more complicated. Now, if we get MS Paint out, so let's say this is your HP pool. Okay. Health pool. Reserved. This is reserved. Oh, it's great, really, it's great. This is reserved. Now, let's split this in half. So, left side is 50%. Right side is 60. Now the way blood rush works is that it's an instant recovery. So this is considered 60% remaining. Well it's 55, right? But blood notch will recover. It's about, it's about the damage to recover. Now because Petri blood it was 60%. So when you take a hit, you will go down a this is not the, this is the hit that both people take, right? Now, when you use a 50% blood notch, you will only go back up this much. Okay, one hit that much. But with a blood notch 60, when you go down to here, right, you'll go all the way back up to full. So this is 60. This is a terrible arrow. 55 and less is 50 and so on, right? 40 etc. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't really matter because you will gain life from uh, life get. That's a terrible color. You gain life, life gain on hits, and it's not too big of an issue. However, if you get shotguns, you just go straight to the bottom and you might die. So, it's, it is important to get a like in a hit that's relatively high, you know, I would say above 50, above 50. So you want to minimize this gap right here, this gap right here, it, it's bad. Because if you get hit a lot, by the same answer, say, the, say Raging Dead 5 or 4 hits you 6 times, you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, now you're down to, over here, it's, it's not good. Right? It's not the best. So that's Petrified Blood Mechanics with Blood Notch. Okay, the way Defiance works, for those who have it, now, Fines specifically says gain 42% of missing unreserved life. Now, we would like to keep our reserved life as, as less as possible. So, the reason why we run a level 1 purity, sorry, a level 1 um, vitality is, let's go back to the picture. I'll clear this off. Delete. Now, if you take a look. I um let's draw. Can't draw like Moshi or anything, but I here's a light pool. Let's say this is 55%. 55, right? 50. This part here is reserved. Now we can I did show like this. In a fully res reserved world where you reserve all 50 45 percent, then when you are at, let's use orange, say here. If this is your life pool, and between here is your missing unreserved life. This is the missing unreserved. The defiance of destiny will kick in and heal you 42% of this. Which means you now go to, say, like here, 42%. Now, what is the other way you can look at this it is by say we're now no longer reserving 45 percent we are only reserving um let's say 40 percent or 35 right 35 percent say we're reserving 30 red 35 percent now our missing our reserved is now 65 percent but even though we can only heal to 55%, this gap here is very important. Very, very important. Because now, when the final death kicks in, if we extrapolate this over here, using the blue line, um, when this is kicked in, this gap here is bigger. This is a bigger gap. Now, the finals are kicking 42%, up to here. 
which means in the end you will kill more with defiance when you have more unreserved life so you don't want to reserve everything until 55 percent you ideally having more is better because if this gap here exists such that let's say let's pre let's pretend the finance heals 50 percent let's pretend it now this is 35 and which means under 55 is 20 percent right which means when you're lost 20% life now you're down to 35% life here and in the perfect in the in the fake world where the fire is 50 you will instantly full heal and then from this point on wherever you're at 1 HP you'll always go back up to a much higher life total because you have more missing and reserved life I just, I just realized the true ratio is terribly but I hope you understand the point okay and we're done Okay, to cover in at the end, for Ultimatum AFK, you should absolutely take Nature's Patience. However, during P17s or content where you move around a lot, you can take this out. So, it's up to you, depending on the content you're going to do. Okay, moving on. The last thing, last few things I want to talk about is... Um... I forgot already. What was, what was it? Okay. There's a bug. Alright. So, if you notice, when we have, um, like, clockwork here, I believe for some people, it doesn't actually say 0.8 here. Oh, wait. Hold on. Cut and stunned. Where are you? Back in here. And back in here. Now, for some people... This, the cooldown time of this skill is 0 0.10, which means that this is not applying. So, apparently, this can be fixed by doing refund and reapplying it. And your, your cooldown will be 0 0.08. Same with other skills. Now, finally, the last thing. Um, what is this on my spacebar? This is Pyroclast Mine of Sabotage. Now, I was told this by Mua, who was in my chat earlier, that um, actually, this works with DD. So, this actually works with all your skills. So the general idea is you hold spacebar while single target, or in a single target scenario, and to give you 15 stacks of higher class mines, which gives you up to 2200 flat fire damage as poison. That is pretty strong. So. From my experience, I would say this is about a 50% damage increase from at, at level 20. Of course, you can boost it up with a glove, with rings, blah blah blah. You can boost it up. So, say you get a hand of high templar with plus two, plus two, plus two, and power, so double, double, now it's level 30. The max fire is like 4,000, 5,000, and it's huge. And the very last thing I want to talk about after this is class. Now, this is actually. Now, a big factor to class, because Pyroclast Mines is an aura, so if you have a look, it says aura, yep. Now, there is one passive on Saboteur that makes this insane. You get 150% increased effect of auras from mines, okay. So now this is 2.5 times that number from Demolition Specialist, so this is really big for a saboteur that mine is being multiplied by 2.5 2.5 so that 4000 damage is now 10,000 damage base damage as hits now you can still go pathfinder because pathfinder has poison poison spread life class synergy uh magic class synergy and wither default so she already has wither you can also go slayer so slayer We'll have the leeching masteries the culling strike which is really good damage against bosses if you want to do bossing time is too slow you i believe there's i believe the other one is you can also allocate fortify with um the bit of flesh and flames there are some people who are on marauder i wouldn't recommend the marauder maybe you can go chieftain but you might as well play a different build 
because Chieftain would only give you uh, 5 max res Shen, I guess, and the rest is kind of useless. The, the fire explode Casalio, I think, should be okay, but I wouldn't recommend it. And lastly, Hierophant, oh boy, I would not recommend it at all. The passive tree is really bad, and there's one person, there's one person in my chat who would always, he's, just, he's still going Hierophant for no reason. Which is, I would say which is okay, but Elementalist, no. Necro, maybe. I mean, cast speed for single target, I guess, maybe. Um, a cold is pretty good with the, the cold chart, the cold chaos, and the extra curse and everything. Yeah, so that's the last thing about classes, and that should be it. And I hope you have a better time. AFKing. Oh, where's the higher shadow? Bam, low OCE. There you go. So, um, I will look into what I can do further. I have some ideas about um, pushing this build to super high levels of juicing, or like ghost busting, because my idea is well, if we take. If you have original sin, or if I have original sin and I take Avatar Fire, I do no damage, and I can drag the whole map onto a, like a sulfur node and blow it up for massive quantity. That's my testing I'm about to do. I've been doing T17s really well, as you've seen in the seen in the intro. Um, so the limit of this build is actually quite high, much further than I expected. Now, of course, each one the AFK and ultimatum, go for it. That's what I've been doing. It's so easier. And yep, that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. See ya.